What's up everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, I will go through installing an aftermarket stereo in a 2009 Chevy Impala. There are some special steps, so hopefully you find this helpful. To get started, remove the existing radio. I already made a video for this and a link is down in the description, so check that out first. The process is easy and the video is less than two minutes long. With the radio removed, you will have the antenna connection and two harness connectors. Next, let's look at the adapter kit to adapt an aftermarket stereo to the vehicle. This was advertised as a complete kit, with everything you need. The link is down in the video description. Here are the crimp connectors to connect the wires. This is the antenna adapter, and this is the harness adapter. And here is the adapter to mount the stereo in the dash. It has several accessories because it is a universal kit made for several different vehicles and it can support a single DIN or a double DIN stereo. Not all of the parts will be used. Here's the new aftermarket stereo that I'll be using. I'll put a link in the description. But there's nothing special about it, and there are hundreds of other options. This is a double DIN stereo, which means the face is tall. And here's an example of a single DIN stereo, which could also be used. So we've got the stereo, the wiring harness, and some hardware. The stereo comes with its own harness that connects to the back, which will need to be connected to the adapter harness using the wire crimps. I will be using wire crimpers and strippers to connect them. Then the adapter harness connects to the vehicle harness. Before I continued with wiring, I made sure the harness adapters fit the harness, and they do, so we're good to go. Now let's connect some wires. You pretty much just match up the colors black to black, yellow to yellow, solid purple to solid purple, purple with stripe to purple with stripe, and so on. You can use the labels on the harness packaging and the stereo manual to verify that the colors match up. Here is the completed harness. And now a few special things to point out for this vehicle. The orange wire was not used. This is for a dimmer, which this vehicle doesn't have. So cap the end off. And here is the red wire that supplies power to the stereo when the ignition key is on. However, do not connect red to red. The adapter harness has it because it's universal, but the Impala harness does not supply ignition power to this wire. You will need to use this red extension wire in the kit to connect the red wire in the harness to a keyed power source elsewhere in the vehicle. Now let's install the stereo in the mounting kit. Recall that this is a universal kit for several vehicles. For the Impala, we will only need five pieces. First, bracket number two, and bracket number three. We also need these two brackets. They are both the same. Then there are two choices for the frame. We want this one because it matches the existing stereo, and the climate control cluster locates in these grooves. Here is an adapter pocket if you are using a single DIN stereo. Here's an example in a different vehicle that I own. Next, let's build the installation kit so we can install the stereo. The side pieces assemble with slots and grooves. They only go together one way. Just make sure everything is fully seated and snapped together. The flat pieces are universal. They are both the same, so you cannot mix them up. They can only be installed one way. And the sides also connect to the frame with tabs and slots. They just snap together and they can only be assembled one way. Now the stereo can be installed into the mounting bracket using the four screws that came with the stereo, using the directions that came with the stereo. For this stereo, two screws get installed on each side, securing the stereo to the installation kit. And be conscious of orientation here, because the stereo can be installed upside down. Now let's go to the vehicle and install it. First we need to route this wire through here, down to this fuse box on the floor. I'm going to connect this wire to the bottom leg of this fuse, which is for the power windows. This location provides switched power. It provides 12 volts when the ignition key is on, and 0 volts when the ignition key is off. This is exactly what we need. Now we'll run the wires behind the plastic covers to the stereo area in here. First, we will feed it through behind this cover, and I'm doing it one-handed while holding a camera, because there's no room to set up a tripod in here. Unless I rip out the seat. 
just pretend this is the real seat. My shoulder's a little sore today, so I didn't want to rip the real one out. Now we will pop these two rivets to drop this cover, and feed the wire through under the cover. Then reinstall the rivets to secure the cover, and route the rest of it through to the stereo area. Success! Following the wire, it's hidden behind the panels all the way to the box. All set. Then use the antenna adapter to connect the antenna in the vehicle to the back of the stereo. Next, I crimped a spade connector onto the end of the harness wire so it can be connected to the extension wire. Now let's finally install this stereo. First, I'll connect the keyed power wire that we just installed and add some electrical tape just to be safe. Next, I connected the adapter wiring harness to the vehicle wiring harness. Then, the adapter wiring harness to the stereo. Now the wiring is complete. Reinsert the radio into the opening along with the climate control. Reinstall the two screws for the climate control, the four screws for the stereo, then reconnect the electrical connector to the trim piece, and snap the trim piece back into place. And now we're all set. The mission is complete. Turn on the ignition and enjoy your new stereo. As always, I hope you found this helpful. Drop any comments below. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.